Welcome, 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 everybody. Um, today, we have the uh, pleasure, I have the deep honor of introducing y'all. For those that don't know him, but I'm sure many, many, many folks do, uh, but the amazing, multi-talented, multi-instrumentalist, Trey Moore. <sighs> <laughs> welcome, 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 Trey. I'm uh, I'm really, really excited um, to be talking to you, man. Um, I have been a deep, deep appreciator of uh, your music um, for a while, and um, so I'm glad we're getting. I'm glad we're getting to sit down and talk, man. So. Um, I'm just going to jump in here. Um, brand new album. Yeah. Goodbye Nirvana EP, six songs, 21 minutes. I got to say, um, I appreciate the short song structure. Yeah. Is what? T you tell me about much, that. You won't got that much time, man. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. At least it's just fitting for like where my life is. It's just like I'm always like I'm not really in that like I'm not grounded right now. Mm. Mm. Like you know, young twenty something year old just kind of figuring stuff out. Um, yeah. Creatively, constantly developing, like almost every other day. Like I'm like a new artist. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when I release songs, it's like I just give them a little bit of who I am at this very moment. Um, and sometimes that just kind of looks like twenty minutes, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's my right. That's what it is. Yeah. Now I hear you. Um, how many albums you got, man? Uh, or let me say it another way. How many albums are out? You probably got like thirty albums worth of material, but how many albums? are in the world that people can go listen to? Uh, there are probably about four projects they can listen mm -hmm. to. Okay. Three, four. Um, kind of, they're pretty spaced out. I mean, they're like a year apart at least. Like I, I try to put out at least one solid project a year. A year, um, yeah. I've been wanting to put out more music and you'll see like me put out more music like next year mm -hmm. the years following um kind of touching on like you kind of mentioned i probably have like a, a like a bunch of music i did yeah. it before i do now okay but like i've never i was never like you know like prince and those guys like yeah right and with the vaults like i never had like a personal vault until like most recently and we'll talk about like why that is but um yeah but yeah i digress there's like three projects out there three or four that people can listen to so okay all right yeah well why don't we jump into one really quick okay um let's start with the um let me make sure i got my screen shared here let's start with the title track from the latest one goodbye nirvana is the latest one right yeah 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 that dropped okay some weeks ago okay all right cool yeah i was um I was excited when it was when it was about to uh, to hit the streets here. Let's see, I should be sharing. Let me know if you can hear this. Okay. Goodbye, yeah. Goodbye, pleasure, girl. We have fun together. But I don't belong in your world. Goodbye, Nirvana. Goodbye, pleasure, girl. We have fun together, but I don't belong in your world no more, Nirvana. Ooh, Nirvana. Ooh, Nirvana. That no more 
me yeah man that is you so tell me about that um so i so you're playing are you playing everything i'm playing everything yeah that's yeah. incredible dude that's incredible um and you're singing everything i'm singing everything yeah yeah and you and you wrote everything i wrote it <laughs> I'm noticing a trend here, Trey. Why you don't like working with people, man? Nah, it's no, crazy. I'm so like, I'm I'm kidding, I'm yeah, tell me about it. Tell me about it. So up until like literally this summer, I never, I won't say never. I have really creative friends who like I love to death. Like, you know, I'm like Paul and those yeah. guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, and we grew up like creating things to get or like playing together in things and such like in school. Yeah. And then when we came of age, like we would write with each other here and there, but I don't know, this life, I don't think I've ever really worked with someone like consistently, like or on like like some things that kind of materialized into putting like music that I gave the people. Um yeah. literally up until like this summer where I went away to like work um be a part of a camp and like had the experience of like collaborating and such. Um, so like a lot of a lot of me like doing things on my own was kind of just out of, out of necessity you know what i'm saying it's like yeah. you know like sometimes music takes time like and unless you're literally like living with these people on the on, on a daily basis and like really spending time with them it can be hard to get music done um yeah so like i would i never i grew up as a musician like i was not interested in singing at all Mm. Literally okay. until I was like, I don't know, 20, 21. Wow. Okay. And then I started like singing and trying to record my voice and stuff like that, like in a real way. Um, yeah. Mainly because like I wasn't really around other people who could do it for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I had all these ideas. So it's like, I yeah. want these ideas to get out. Um, so someone has to sing it, you know? So. Right that kind of like turned it like to who I am now. Like the ideas come so fast that sometimes I don't have time to call my friends to like help me record it or help me write it. Um, but yeah. I love collaborating. Like I, I think that's like essential to like growth, you know, being around other people who are dope and like creative in different yeah. ways. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I, there's a way in which I find my own playing takes an incredible leap when I collaborate, particularly with other uh, other musicians. Yes, but particularly with other other drummers. I find like when I'm when I get to play with other percussionists and other drummers, um, it's that that kind of synergy and seeing the way that they communicate through their through their medium through their instrument. Um, I find it really inspiring um and enriching so what was that experience like for you um you had mentioned um a sort of songwriters um experience um you had said you, you used the word camp um what was that like what was that experience like for you 
Um, it was cool. Um, so I, I had like the privilege of like working with um, a producer by the name of Brandon Hodge. Um, he goes by Bam and he's actually from Connecticut. Amazing okay. bass player. Like, as you know, the Connecticut, we put out so many cool musicians and really, really like top tier yeah. um, musicians. So I had the privilege of connecting with him a couple years back. He discovered my music. And I don't know if he even realized I was from Connecticut or how that happened, but he discovered my music and um, we kind of formed a relationship. And fast forward, um, he had this cool idea to invite um, different songwriters and musicians and producers to pretty much stay under the same roof, roof for um, quite a bit of time and work on material mm -hmm. for some specific projects. Um, and like camps are a thing, you know, from what I hear in the industry, like people do sure. that. Yeah. Um, but from what I heard, this this camp was a bit different. Um, and from my experience, it was special, but mm -hmm. I was kind of the newbie. So I had like no like reference point for like yeah. what the standard was. Sure. Um, yeah, and it turned out to be like a really transformative like experience for me um, as a person to like my process, like my, literally everything changed, like my creative outlook, um, work ethic, just being around other people who are not that they're like more talented than the, the next person but they have the experience and mm -hmm. you know kind of like that mentality yeah it's like it's like the equivalent of like i use like the example of like being a basketball player right because I, I played basketball mm -hmm. and you um you're a sophomore in high school and you go away to a basketball camp that summer and you come back right. your junior year killing yeah. because you went and you played with more experienced uh, people sure. who talked to the game and like kind of um, brought you through that um, training. Yeah. So that's pretty much what that was for me being around um, established songwriters and producers who I can learn from and mm -hmm. who they, they respected me as like a peer, but yeah. The whole time I was just like soaking it in, and I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if they know how much like they really changed everything for me. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what incredible. that experience was. I I was there for literally like the whole summer, so I can talk about it for hours. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I so you you had mentioned um, about work ethic, I, I, and I kind of want to stay stay on this. On, on the camp for a little while because I'm I'm fascinated by this because um, I, I I've also heard of of these camps um, and actually recently stumbled across a podcast called Dissect. I'm not sure if you heard of this podcast, but if you hadn't, it might be worth checking out. But basically, you got this guy who takes a, an album, one album, and goes track by track and like analyzes it, like breaks it down. Uh, like academic style, like lyrics and and songwriting and all this stuff. And and the first album that he does is um, to pimp a butterfly. Mm. Uh, and it's it's incredible. I mean, I already knew the album was incredible, but after listening to this, it's like a totally different perspective on the album. Um, but the reason I'm bringing it up in this in this sphere anyway, is because um, one of the other albums that he breaks down is um, my uh, Dark dark Twisted Fantasy. And he, and he talks about how, how Kanye had a camp in Hawaii and, and basically brought all these people into this, into this big house and, and people were kind of coming and going. Some people would come, they'd stay for two, three weeks, they'd leave. Other people would come in, they'd be there for a month and leave or whatever. Um, and so, but one of the things that, that they all talked about was how like Kanye almost never left the studio, right? He was just in the studio the, the entire time, you know, making this album would take naps, you know, like right there in the studio, get up and just get back to work. You had mentioned work ethic and I'm curious about 
you know, when you're in that kind of environment immersed, what, what did you mean when you said, you know, just kind of like watching a work ethic or learning, you had, you had said something about work ethic and I want to hear more about that. Well, um, for one, I would like preference like my comments by saying like that kind of environment is for sure a privilege that it's hard to replicate that when you got shit going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, your average musician can't just go and rent a house in Hawaii mm -hmm. or Miami sure. for a month and kind of just live there free of care and worry. Um, mm -hmm. So for one, I felt privileged to be there because the way it was set up was very much like um, the way Kanye set, sets up his camps where mm. you go, you live, you know, we had a chef. We wow. have to worry about what we're gonna eat. We have to worry about cleaning. We didn't have That's to worry amazing. about, you know what I'm saying? Some of, some of the yeah. small things that we would typically have to worry about and the emphasis was so purely on creating. Mm -hmm. and, and there were, you know, setups all throughout the house. Um, you know, you can be in a bathroom and walk two feet and there'll be a setup right there, you know. Yeah. It could be, I don't know, on the balcony or whatever. Um, so that kind of environment kind of like caters to like your ability to even like have the focus to, mm -hmm. to dive in in that way. Yeah. Um, which then like gives like leeway for you to be able to like create some really, really cool stuff that you probably wouldn't have been able to if you weren't locked in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but even with that, I, I'll, I'll also say that it's also easy to um, kind of get lost in that because, you know, you set up in these beautiful places, you know, a lot of these camps are like in these gorgeous places, these mansions or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that can house like all these people and make people feel comfortable kind of like, you know, and it could kind of feel like a vacation too, if you aren't too like aware of it yeah. and careful. Um, right. But what I was able to see is, um, or, you know, a privilege to see was like people who write for, you know, some or produce for some of the biggest artists in the world, like, you know, the Beyonce's and, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know. After her, it's hard to like, you know. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, watching these people come into a room that's focused, right. you know, and not in like it's like not in a weird like militant kind of way where it's just like mm -hmm. kind of like chauvinism or whatever. Like yeah, it was just like nah, like this is what I love to do and this is what I'm here to do. Like mm -hmm. like I remember one, you know. A few instances, like, well, one instance in particular, the way that kind of like changed me and my worth ethic, or worth work ethic, yeah, um, was that I, um, you know, I'm a producer, songwriter, mm -hmm. um, so like my first one of my first experiences working with a seasoned songwriter um, was um, as a songwriter by the name of Kes Ross, and he's so dope um and i was really privileged and blessed to meet him and, and work with him um he kind of he walked into the room and he was just ready like it was like his first day there yeah. um the rest of us have been there for like a month already and he walked in just ready and he was just like all right where where are the where are the beats you know like i'm ready to, ready to go yeah um i was just looking through my like files like yo i don't have anything you know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. thought I had, you know what I mean? Like, I thought I, I thought I, you know, I was producing at a pretty relatively good level until someone is looking for things and wants to want to hear through things to write to. Um, I didn't have enough to play him, you know? And I didn't like that feeling. I was like, whoa, like, I'm not really, yeah. I can't keep up in this environment in that way. Um, <clears throat> and um, that kind of just made me kind of like take a step back, like, okay, Trey, like you kind of have to reevaluate how you work and how much you work 
Um, mm. Part of that was the way I was working and creating. Mm -hmm. um, I guess this is a more, I guess we're getting like really in depth as, as far as like process and stuff like that. We're but, good, um, man. Just speak your right, mind. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, 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 no, nah, that's why we're here, man. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, all right. So like the way the way I was working and creating, um, it was like I would say it was like seventy five percent mental, uh, and then like twenty five percent like the literal system and like things I I was using that I kind of had to shift. Um, I realized I was producing too slow. Um, I realized I was sitting with my ideas too long. Mm. So I had cool ideas, but it was taking me too long to produce them and create them. And um, another friend of mine, like I happened to make like really good friends while I was down there, but another friend of mine like heard that and realized like I was working on this song. Um, and he walked in and said, well, that's cool. He walked out and like an hour later, he walked back in and he was like, oh, hey bro, you still working on this? Like, and it hadn't mm. really like, progressed. It was progressing, but it should have yeah. been done, you know? Yeah, right. Um, he was like, yeah, man, you kind of moved slow. Like, and fortunately, I, I took that, I was just able to take that criticism because I was living with these people and I trusted them. Sure. And like, I actually made friends with them. Yeah. Um, and that was, that was another moment that kind of like, I was like, yeah, I, I definitely do need to change something. Um, mm. And then along with the criticism, like these same people helped me. Like I, I changed, like at first I was producing in Pro Tools. Cause that's just what I learned on. Like I learned, yeah. I grew up in studios and stuff. Um, so I switched that out. And then once I switched my system, like I was able to produce faster. Um, nice. the, the mental aspect was um, kind of just trusting my ideas and trusting that first initial feeling mm. um, when I create. Yeah. Um, and bam, Brandon Hodge gave me this insight. Um, and he told me like that, that feeling I get or we get as musicians when we first get that idea, yeah. that's when we should record it. Even if it's not polished or even if it's not formatted, like yeah. you need to lay that down because you'll never get that feeling again. Right. You know, like you, you might, replicate it and like try to it'd be cool you'll still record something cool but that initial like giddiness like that that excitement you get yeah, when you yeah. when it first comes to you that's the that's the thing we need to capture and i realized i wasn't doing that i was spending so much time looking for the perfect sound or looking for the right you know like oh that's a cool idea but what if i switch this or now nah, like that and then after a while like it's an hour and a half and that energy is gone so mm -hmm. that was probably the biggest thing for me was like yeah that's trusting. powerful yeah that's powerful one here's here's what here's what i'm really loving about what you just said you because you use this word twice and i think it's so important uh which is why i'm kind of bringing it back but you you use the word trust mm -hmm. two times one was trust for the people that you're creating with Right. So you're there, you're in this space, you have these people that you're with um, and they're able to impart some wisdom on you from their experience. Um, and you you're at a cross point like you could, you know, you could choose to be like, yo, my process is my process and this is what I'm doing. Exactly. Or you could choose to be like, you know what? Yeah, let me try that. Let me let me think, you know, let, let me figure out how to how to incorporate that. So there's that that trust of, of, of people that you're working with. But then the other time you used the word trust was trusting yourself, mm -hmm. trusting when you get to that moment of, of, of realization, you know, of, of creation when things are beautiful. Um, and, and what I love about this is that like the beauty is not that it's perfect or polished or finish. The beauty is in the roughness and the newness of it, um, as you're as you're pushing through and, and making something like yeah like that 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 the world has never heard before. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty incredible, dude. Yeah, you know you'll never get that feeling again. Like hearing yeah. hearing it said like that, it's like oh snap, I, you're right. I won't get that feeling again. Like you might get another good feeling, another cool feeling. Yeah, yeah, sure. That feeling. It won't be that new yeah. feeling that, you know, the newness of it, like you said, like, that was a good yeah. one. Yeah. 
I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, let's, um, I, I want to do this. Thank you for sharing that. I, I, I think that's, that's so important. And, and you're right. Like this, it, it is a privilege, right? Like it is, um, most of, most musicians will, will probably not get a chance to experience something quite like, like that, you know, like a, like a camp kind of thing going away and being able to, to collaborate. Um, I will say, and, um, yeah, go ahead. Cause a lot of, I, I had to like, when I left, when I came home, I came home like really excited. And I was like, man, I, I want to do that with my friends. Mm. Right? Yeah, I remember like, oh yeah, I can't quite do that with my friends because you know people work and people like got kids and responsibilities. Um, but I don't know, man. I'm just a believer that even if it's like a few hours a day, yeah, an hour out the week, like that, that can be a special time, you know. Yeah, man. So yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah, let's not throw out that idea just yet. Let's mm -hmm. let's see what we. I, I bet there's something we can do about that. I, I me too. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm really about it in a, in a real way. Um, yeah. We can talk. We yeah. Can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk. Yeah, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll take that conversation offline for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. Um, all right, here. Let's. I wanna I wanna jump into another um another tune here, right quick. Cool. Um, this one again off the new EP, Goodbye Nirvana. This particular tune uh, is called Paranoia. Mm -hmm. Let me see where we are. This is beautiful, Trey. Thanks. Well done, my friend. Well done. Yeah. This is um I don't I'm not sure. I remember the first time I listened to this. I actually I usually when I put on an album for the first time, I actually usually listen to it in my car. Same. Um I don't know what that is. I don't I think part of it is like just like being enveloped by the sound that's, that's right like I, is, yeah. is that what it is because i i know it's like you know i i don't i don't have like a super fancy you know stereo setup at home or whatever um i 
there's something about driving and listening to music um, where it's like my mind is active in terms of like driving, but like, you know, driving becomes autopilot. Like, I don't think about that anymore. And, and like the music becomes like the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening to this in the car and I remember just, um, I don't know, there's like, um, there's like a, there's a tenderness to your music that I, I just really love. I'm just really enamored with that, that, um, and I, I can't even put my finger on what it is exactly. If it's the lyrics, if it's, if it's the delivery, the arrangement, I, I, I can't tell why I get that feeling, but, but that's the feeling um, that I get. It's, yeah. it, it's like, it's, it's a little angsty, but it's also sweet. Like, it's also like this, I don't know. I don't know. So, so, so tell me about Paranoia. Um, I mean, the, the song itself, like, as far as like the elements go, like in the elements, like for a lot of this project um, as well, kind of derives from like my like influence. I don't you listen to NERD. Have you have you heard of them or like Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like Pharrell Williams is a, also a part of a group called NERD. Mm -hmm. Um for those out there who aren't aware. Um so like a lot of their music was heavily influenced by like rock and roll and like punk rock and stuff like that. Yeah. Um and then like the yeah, I'll say that's that's kind of like as far as the musical elements go, um, I guess combined with other stuff, but like mainly like heavy NERD influence. Mm -hmm. Um and the song itself, um as far as I don't know if you're interested in like knowing what I'm singing about or like what Yeah, tell me whatever you want to share, man. Yeah, I I, just, I was just like kind of like when I was producing that, I was just kind of making some what felt good. Um mm -hmm. I usually start with, so these days I start with the instrumentals. Like I, I just start playing stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, it just felt good to me. Like I, I try not to like over think yeah. why I'm making something. Mm -hmm. um, I used to do that and that would, I don't know, like my brain, I can get like really off track. Um, and I realized it didn't help me so much as far as like the process went. So now I just kind of just like create freely. And I think that was a product of that. I made that instrumental like when I was away. Okay. Um, and now, so I was in a, already in a place of just like free thinking and like just creating stuff, you know, palm trees and stuff like that. Sure. Um, and then I just started writing to it. Um, not really sure why I wrote it, but yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, no, it's beautiful. Um, I wanted to ask you um, a little bit about the um, the economics, because we we had talked um, very briefly just a minute ago about yeah the challenge for you know a, a, a typical musician doesn't necessarily have the resources or the space to just kind of like sequester themselves away for two months you know in a mansion on the beach or whatever to 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 create and to make music um and you know part of that is is connected to to the economics of of making making art generally um and then with music there's a specific kind of um lots of specific kinds of challenges so i'm wondering for you um how you how you make it work uh for yourself yeah um i would have a lot of these talks when i was away um talking with the older producers and um about about this particular topic i mean i would say one it helps to kind of like, well, I'll speak for me, it helps, and other people too, it helps to like, be able to do this, like, when I say do it, like, <clears throat> record yourself, 
Um, it helps to know how to play instruments. It helps to know how to write music. Um, but at the very least, it helps to not record yourself because, like, as you know, like it can be costly to like make music and um, record music and I don't know rent spaces and and get the resources you need to make art. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely helps me a lot um, that I don't have to go to a studio. Yeah, um, helps me a lot that I don't always have to hire a musician. Mm -hmm. to, to um play what i need um and then like on the back end of everything it helps no not as like i'm i'm not like a component i'm i'm not a hoarder but it's cool to own my music you know like i don't yeah. always need 100% of everything mm -hmm. but I realized like, man, there are people who don't own anything that yeah. that they put out. Um, and it's not necessarily their fault all the time, um, mm -hmm. you know, contracts and stuff like that. But also like some people just really don't, I don't know, they don't write their own music or they don't um, record their own music, like instruments and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then like, they might have a bad contract. So like, then they don't own anything. Um, I don't know. So it's cool to have that insight and it's cool to um, have that ability and have the resources I need to even just like be in my house in my room and just like be recording stuff and then submit it myself. Um, yeah. There are levels to it, you know, where like, yeah, some people are on contracts and stuff like that. So like when I was away, some of the like other young artists I was with, like a, a couple of them like are on contracts so i would see certain frustrations like we're like you know they're making all this cool music and can't put it out you know because it's not uh, their music contracts. to put out yeah. gotcha yeah I, well there are a bunch of like as far as economics so like there are a bunch of different things um and then like you mentioned before that like we were kind of talking about before like performing right now isn't a thing yeah. um so the way we make money in a way like money is flowing right now is completely you know different than anything we've ever seen before mm -hmm. so a lot of different things going on right now yeah yeah and so um so one thing that that people may not be aware of is um the business relationship between an artist like yourself um and spotify let's say right so i just played these two songs on spotify I pay Spotify a subscription every month, a subscription fee every month, mm -hmm. right? And and you as an artist, as an independent artist, because I'm I'm assuming all of this music that's on Spotify is is you. You wrote the music, you play the music, you own the music. It's all you, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right about that? Okay. So um, so how does it work with Spotify? Do you get do you get you know like two pennies every time I play a song? Like how how does that work? Hey, basically. Um, yeah. And it, is it literally two pennies? It really literally might be a fraction of a cent. Okay. It might yeah. not even be two pennies. It might be like a fraction. I, f I forgot the exact number. I'm gonna look it up, but um, yeah. Yes, cause like streaming numbers are so like high, mm -hmm. not for like your average artist, but like, you know, I think the way they factored in that math, um, but yeah, how it works for me is um, I use a third party company, um, distribution company, you know, uh, companies anybody can use like TuneCore, DistroKid, yeah. stuff like that to release music um, independently. Um, it's all music that I own, so I don't have to um, call anyone or get permission yeah. from anyone or, yeah. you know, so when I make this stuff, I can just, as soon as I'm ready, boom put it, out. put it out um obviously if i was if i collaborated on any of them like production wise or songwriting wise i would communicate with that person you know get the right splits or whatever yeah um, but in my case i can just like put them out because they're my songs um entirely yeah um, and then i just i distribute distribute through um 
these sites through these companies and they send it to Spotify. And then so like when I get streams, um, Spotify sends that information to the companies. I, and I also, um, I'm also a part of like BMI, which is um, a company that a lot of people use that, um, what's the proper word? They use technology to like scan your music and like report. Mm -hmm. um, so like if my stuff is played on a radio or like different um, places that I, I get paid for that too. Gotcha. Um, so if your song makes it into, I don't know, a commercial, Pepsi commercial, mm -hmm. they'll, they're the ones that are gonna be like, yep, that we have that artist, you pay us, we pay the artist. Um, I'm not sure how it works with like commercials. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like that'd be more contractual. Okay. You know, and there'd be extra incentive there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for like something like radio or like, you know, things like that. That's a good question. I I haven't crossed that bridge yet, mm -hmm. so I don't have the answer. Like the uh, yeah, I want to like. Give yeah, yeah, no information, like you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's all good. Soon come though. Soon, soon come, Trey. We we want we want to see you on a commercial soon. Yeah, yeah commercials would be cool. <laughs> all right, here's my here's my um, here's my mystery track that I was telling you about earlier. This is I like this one, um, from the Things We Feel album. Oh man. <laughs> I'm about to be embarrassed because it's like, oh, that's old me, but I'm ready. All right. All right. Here we go. Hold on. Let me um bag that for you. I, I, I can relate to that feeling though. I, I know exactly what you're yeah, talking about. Like, you and know what I'm saying? I, yeah. And the thing is, it's not even old me could be something I recorded yesterday. I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> I don't even yeah, hear it. yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't it doesn't take long. All right, but I I personally I love this track. I, I come back to it all the time. Um, so it doesn't feel like old you to you, old you to me. It feels like this is dope. I like that. I, I like your phone. <laughs> yeah. Is this all you too, Trey? You're, you're playing everything here? Like, no, nah, it wasn't, but sometimes also to, to be fair, 2020 has been yeah. like 17 years piled up into one. So I was about to say, like, I feel like significantly older 
<laughs> everybody does. Dude. Yeah, man, everybody does. It's pretty wild. Yeah. That, was, um, that was a cool time though, like when I put that out, because like I was really just starting to like figure out how to like make music and stuff. Yeah. I was just like it's I was just go ahead. I was, go ahead. Like, I was like testing I was just trying stuff and that's a cool place to be in. Like and I just got back to that whole like trying just trying stuff phase, like just like coming up with new stuff. Yeah. It was cool that you played that. It reminded me of that like that feeling. It's interesting because I think I think as artists, and let me not speak for all artists. I'll just speak from my own experience. I'll just say like, I know that I can sometimes pressure myself mm -hmm. to be a certain way. And a lot of this, I'm gonna say like 85% of this comes from comparison. I think about, what my favorite drummer is doing or what my favorite conguero is doing. And I think to myself, I got to be doing that. I got to be able to do that. Oh man, I love what they do. Oh man, I got to, I got to figure out how to do that. As opposed to taking that in, taking that in as inspiration and then being like, what am I going to do? Like, you know, how, how does this, how is this going to work through my body? Not, not like I'm trying to do what he's doing, but I'm, I'm trying to be the best version of me uh, that I could be. And I do this a lot. I do this a lot. I, 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 I fall victim to this all the time. Um, there's not really a question there. It's just I, it, when, when you said like that, that just trying stuff energy, because uh, that I agree with you is when I also feel the feel the best in what I'm doing is just being un unencumbered untethered to some idea of what I'm supposed to be doing it's, it's really like the only way like you know it's not like it's not the only way to get music made mm. but it's the only way for this shit not to be a headache you know yeah so feel heavier mm -hmm. than what it should like the process um, be like joyful when you're doing exactly work. like it's like you it really should be a joy and i think we all at one point in our creative journey or another can pinpoint a time when it was just a joy yeah you know yeah and i'm just getting back to that like it was a joy for me when i was like 16 in a studio for the first time and like i just got permission to be down there yeah just like mess around with stuff and it was a joy for me when i was just like figuring it out and learning how to like do it and i like was making my first songs and they were trash but it was like <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's like oh snap mm -hmm. like i'm making music like this is like mm -hmm. cool. yeah. you know yeah. i was showing my friends and stuff like that and they were excited yeah. um so that feel I'm, i've just gotten back to that feeling and it's a journey sometimes to Get back to that because it's the way like the things life throw at you and the, the different things we have to like navigate before um getting back to that place um but yeah it's um that's how it should be like it, it just should be a joy yeah yeah it, it, it just takes certain experience and things to remind us of that sometimes and um I think we all can get back to that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, Trey, we're getting close to time, man. I got two two more questions for you, man. The um the first one is, um, if you could go back and talk to let's see, fifteen year old Trey. Mm -hmm. If you could go back and talk to 15 year old Trey and offer uh, a piece of wisdom, what would it be? Hmm. I would say like, I probably, I mean, this is a cliche, but I would tell him like, you're, 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 you're good. Like, mm -hmm. like you're going to be straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. don't, don't trip about, when it happens 
You know, mm -hmm. don't like, mm -hmm. don't be too like. I w I wouldn't tell them not to overreact per se, because you know, you gotta have feelings, but it's like, all right, when these things happen, just know it's that's not the end. Yeah. Just you there's like a, a another path for you. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I would just tell him that. I yeah. think I think he would feel a lot more at ease about certain things. Cause you know, yeah. 15 year olds have a lot of like aspirations and for sure. Just trying to figure out things. So for me, I would uh I kind of had like that go getter mentality. Mm -hmm. Um, got to get it from my mom. Like she's a singer, and yeah. whatever ideas we have, it's like yeah, I'm gonna do this, and it's gonna happen. Yeah, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Doesn't happen, um, or it doesn't happen that way. Yeah, right. And then so that feeling for six, fifteen year old me would like be devastating. Yeah. But I would tell them like, oh, you're you're straight. You don't really need yeah. that. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank thank you for that. Yeah, that's a it's a great piece of wisdom um, for anybody, not just not just fifteen year old Trey. Um, my last question is, I ask this question of everybody. It's not terribly original, but I stick to it. Gotta have some conventions. <laughs> it's been working so far. Um, what haven't I asked you that I should have? I don't know. I think it was cool. Like, I know, like, you, I don't know. It's a bunch of things you could have asked, but as far as, like, should have asked, man, I don't know. Okay. All right. So I, I, so I will ask the question that, that oftentimes gets answered this way, which mm -hmm. is what is next? What's next for Trey Moore? What, what should we be looking out for? Well, you definitely can expect a lot more music from me. Yeah. Um, Excellent. Like I touched on earlier, I'm, I've been making a lot of music and it's going to get heard either way. Um, yeah. I've also been producing for other artists now, which is something I wasn't super interested in doing up until I got back from Florida. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So yeah. Be on the lookout for music for me. Yeah. Um also other creative content, because I shoot videos and things like that too. Okay. Um so be on the lookout for all things like creative from Trey and yeah cool songs from other people too that i may be a part of so great great well in the name of um shameless plug i also um mm -hmm. am excited about about this little project we got we got cooking up yeah. um moving along moving along slower than i'd like it to but but that's all right it, it'll it'll come in the time it needs to come i'm ready um but um, Trey, man, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much yeah. um, for, well, like for being on. Interview stuff sometimes because right up and this is like the point where you're like super comfortable. Like, you know, <laughs> know. Like, yeah, like you're, you're ready to go for like three more hours. Right. But yeah. I'll let you rock. No, nah, soon come. We'll, we'll have those days too. We could just sit and, and, and just pontificate and talk yeah. uh, for hours. But right now they only given us an hour so that's we'll cool. take we'll take what we got and run with it trey this has been awesome good brother um i got i got one last thing i'm gonna i'm gonna show because there's a thing that i know about you um that i think anyone who knows you all right so i already knows. know what you about the show bro you know, <laughs> all right go ahead though i, I will let you rock though <laughs> There's a thing I know about you that I, I mean, I don't think it's any secret. So I think, you know, what, mm -hmm. what folks are about to see is not like uh, some kind of, uh, some kind of secret or nothing like that. Yeah. Let me see if I could pull it up right quick here. I know what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Can I see it? <laughs> You're about to see 
You're about to see it. You're about to see it in a minute. Yeah, you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share it with the whole. Let's see, share this, share that. Oh, so I actually wasn't expecting this one, but yeah. <laughs> this, for those that don't know. I'm excited by this. I'm gonna be out there next summer with y'all, bro. Please, please. I'm all the way into this. I'm all the way into this. I, I was, I was, yeah, yeah. I was excited by it. Oh, hold on a second. I still got this playing in my ear. Let me shut that down. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm all the way. I'm all the way into this. This, this is, this is excellent. Yeah. Uh, you were so you are a skater extraordinaire. I saw you. You y'all did a night. You did a, a an adult skate night not too long ago. Yeah, How did that go? It was tight. It was it yeah. was dope. People were super safe. Um, and yeah, it was all all smooth. We're hoping to bring it back when things calm down. Yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to it. For real. Mentally. But yeah, come out there. Paul got some skate. Oh, he's about to get some skates. I'm trying to get everyone out there. All right. Well, to, if yeah, if if Paul get out there, I'm definitely getting out there, bro. We need y'all out there, and I I would personally work with y'all. Like, <laughs> I'm do, I'm in. Say no more. Say bro. no more. I'm in. I'm in. I I gotta find find where I can get my skates, and I'm in. I'll send you some some options. All right. All right. Bet. Hey Trey, it's it's been a pleasure, man. If if no one has said it to you today, I love you, good brother. Keep Thank doing you. the work you're doing. You are um, an absolute inspiration. New Haven is proud to have you, man. Um, yeah, keep doing what you're doing, man. This is um, this is a big deal. We're gonna look back at this interview in in ten years and be like, yo, I, I, I was talking to Trey Moore. Look, I got the proof, man. I got the video. Here it is, man. Now I'm telling you, man. It's happening. It's happening. They're gonna believe you. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> well look man have have a good weekend stay keep yourself safe and warm and um and we'll be talking soon man all right man you too all right peace